system plus Star Wars plus Star Destroyer plus not selling patriotic rice, Lin Kai, as an ordinary office worker, has always lived a repetitive and boring life. Until one day he worked until dawn and received a letter that completely changed his life. He bound the system and transformed into a high-ranking member of the First Fleet. His birthplace was located inside the Bridge of the Supreme. And after Kelo Lun defeated Snook, fortunately Lin Kai had a system to assist him, which directly wiped out Kelo Lun. Afterwards, Lin Kai took the opportunity to become the highest leader of the First Order. Then, in order to complete the tasks assigned by the System Academy, Lin Kai's system instructed him to lead the First Order fleet to shuttle through various universes and fight. Now, no one knows what this soul from another world will bring to the Milky Way. Chapter 1. Supreme Number. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. The author of this book is not good at writing, just make do with it. If you can't even make do with it, give it a one-star review. Also, I have put the image of the supreme number here. Closing parenthesis. Lin Kai is an ordinary person, his appearance is not outstanding, and his family is not wealthy. He lived those repetitive days until he received a letter that day. Dear Mr. Lin, you have been selected by me to become a traveler soon. One hour after you read this letter, you will travel into the worldview of Star Wars and become the captain of the Supreme. Wishing you a happy new life. Lin Kai, who saw this letter, didn't pay attention and just casually threw it into the trash can. After casually saying a prank about which idiot was idle, he continued to work. After an hour, exhausted Lin Kai returned home and fell asleep. So youth is good. On the second day, Lin Kai woke up with a painful expression on his face, feeling dizzy. It must have been because he was squeezed by the boss yesterday. At this moment, he realized that he was no longer in the familiar bedroom. But in a room with a strong sense of science fiction. Through the transparent steel on the bridge, Lin Hui saw the vast universe and a star ahead and his cheap clothes changed into First Order military uniforms at some point, and he was also a high-ranking official. Just as the Earthlings continued to observe the surroundings, a cold mechanical sound came into their ears. The Star Destroyer Traverse system has been successfully bound. The sudden sound startled the Earthlings, but then he realized he had bound his system. Then the excited system asked itself which destroyer captain it was. The system replied, Host, your current identity is the captain of the Supreme. The Supreme number and First Order secret have been sent to the host's mind for reception. As soon as the system voice finished, Lin Kai's mind was filled with a lot of information, and then Lin Hui began to work hard to mobilize the part about the Supreme number. The Supreme is an interstellar dreadnought belonging to the First Order, used as the mobile command center and capital of the First Order, as well as the flagship of Snooker. As the military organization of the First Order, the Supreme not only carries one of the top heavy firepower in space warfare for combat, but also a combination of facilities such as shipyards, repair shops, medical stations, command and dispatch centers, landing ships, prisons, and so on. The Supreme is an unprecedented giant-like existence in the Star Wars worldview, measuring approximately 13 kilometers in length and up to 4 kilometers in height. With an exaggerated wingspan of 60 kilometers, which is even longer than the three executor-class star dreadnoughts from the Empire era connected together. This type of warship can be described as the largest, larger than all the large warships of the old Empire. Its massive size not only intimidated the enemy, but also gave the supreme, excellent ship-birthing ability. 
There are two huge internal hangars, and even a Revival class Star Destroyer can be parked inside for maintenance. With sufficient supplies, it can even directly manufacture a Revival class Star Destroyer inside the warship. In order to drive this behemoth, the battleship is equipped with 32 sub-light speed engines in addition to hyperspace engines. And at least six polymer reactor complexes are installed on the starboard side to facilitate the maintenance of power in emergency situations. The Supreme Star Dreadnought can dock a total of eight Revival class destroyers, six externally, and two internally. These battleships and the Supreme constitute the first fleet of the First Order. In order to operate, the USS Supreme requires at least 2,225,000 personnel of various types, including officers, stormtroopers, gunners, ship engineers, communication dispatchers, weapon technicians, and so on. There are actually at least 10 standardized military garrisons inside the warship, each of which can accommodate at least one SA Corps, which is 36,000 people. The area where warships are responsible for logistics supply and operations is mainly operated by the youth stormtroopers, who, under the brainwashing of the First Order, remain steadfast in their lofty ideals of conquering the Milky Way and restoring the Empire to the end. At the same time, the Supreme was the shipyard of the First Order Navy and its practical significance was actually closer to a space station compared to warships. The First Order also moved the research center to the battleship, where the research center had undergone special reinforcement in an area where many undisclosed studies of the First Order were conducted, including various new weapons still in the experimental stage. In terms of weapons, the Supreme has a large number of heavy turbo laser guns, anti-warship missile arrays, heavy ion guns, and towed beam projectors. In addition, the Supreme spacecraft can also perform calculations based on the last known position and heading of the spacecraft in real space. As well as the calculation mode of the navigation computer, to determine the spacecraft's transition destination, and then perform a hyperspace jump on its own to reach the spacecraft's transition site and destroy it. But even though it was as powerful as the Supreme, its performance was very poor. After defeating some small ships of the Resistance organization, it was then destroyed by the Godwind of the Laddus, along with more than 20 revival ships. With countless thoughts moving in his mind, Lin Kai suddenly said to the system, Brother Tongza, why is there no one on the supreme number now? Quote, this 60,000 meter warship alone would require at least tens of thousands of people to move, right? Cough cough. Isn't this giving the host some time to adapt and let the host adapt to their identity first? Otherwise, there may be some very awkward things after that, the system replied. Quote, after hearing the system's words, Lin Kai silently counted the time in his heart. In the moment 300 seconds passed, the personnel on the entire warship appeared instantly. The big stone hanging in Lin Kai's heart finally fell when he saw this. If this person doesn't appear, what will happen to me, an ordinary office worker? Just as Lin Kai was still fantasizing about a better life in the future, the holographic image of Snook, the owner of the Supreme, suddenly appeared in front of Lin Kai. Ordering Lin Kai to lead the first fleet to pursue the main force of the resistance organization on a planet, Lin Kai pretended to accept Snook's order very seriously. Then he ordered the staff inside the bridge to supply the starboard reactor output to the 32 sub-light speed engines of the Supreme, causing the massive warship to move at an extremely fast speed. Subsequently, it merged with 12 Fuxing-class destroyers and jumped into hyperspace together. After giving the order, Lin Kai urgently asked the system, 
brother Tongza, can you just kill Karen, Ray, and Snook together? Quote dot. The system replied, you can only slaughter one. If you slaughter more, it will be discovered by the system academy, and then you will return to your original world. Quote dot. Upon hearing this, Lin Kai gritted his teeth and reminisced about the plot. Karen killed Snook, and Ray could allow the fleet's firepower to fully unleash as he entered the interior of the Supreme, so Karen could only enjoy the pleasure of being wiped out by the system alone. I don't want to experience what it feels like to lock my throat with the Force, so I let Caroline die early in Star Wars 8. Quote, the resistance organization on the other side was destroyed after the commissioning of the IV-class Dreadnought Thunder, which had just used First Order as a weapon testing platform. They witnessed a scene that would be unforgettable to them for a lifetime where nearly 20 Revival-class destroyers jumped out of hyperspace after sounding sharp alarms. Next came the 60,000-meter-wide Supreme, which emerged from the hyperspace. Then, the emerald green explosive beam rained down on its own fleet. At this moment, the Ladus, who wanted to escape, was forcibly pulled back by the Supreme's traction beam projector to withstand the emerald green ocean. Not long after, Karen joined the battle in her TIE Whisperer to show her loyalty to the snooker. This forced the rear fleet to slow down their firing speed. This special model of TLE, driven by Karen, directly sent a proton torpedo into the hangar of the Ladus, making the already poor condition of the diarrhea, even worse. On the other hand, Ray, who was planning to enter the interior of the Supreme, was set on fire by a large number of heavy turbo laser cannons. After such fierce firepower lasted for more than 10 seconds, the person who claimed to be a Skywalker in Star Wars 9 was completely wiped out. Afterwards, everything developed like the original plot, and Karen returned to the inside of the Supreme. The Supreme leader, Snook, was cut in half by Karen with a lightsaber. Then they started fighting with Snook's red-clad guards, and just as Karen was about to win, a bomb suddenly appeared in front of him. The explosion of the bomb directly sent Karen and the group of red-clad guards away together. At this time, Lin Kai, standing in the bridge, looked at the diarrhea number whose shield had not been broken even though it was submerged by the emerald green sea, and said, Is this his mother experimental shield or the main character or a shield? Quote dot. Darth Mickey's response to this. As we all know, the number of MC-80 shield generators is several times that of Empire level so it's not a problem to exaggerate our diarrhea number as 10 times revival level. Moreover, the diarrhea number is equipped with a new type of shield, so a defense of 10 times is even more normal. Chapter 2 System. Once ready, traverse. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Let the entire fleet use ion cannons to attack the Ladus and bombard me. All other weapons aim at the fleeing resistance fleet. Destroy all resistance groups here. Faced with the indiscriminate bombardment of the strongest fleet in the First Order, the Ladus, equipped with experimental shields, took several decades to break through the shield. Subsequently, the large number of high-energy particle clusters fired by the ion cannon directly paralyzed the diarrhea more severely than a person paralyzed in the lower body. Seeing this scene, Lin Kai easily waved his hand and ordered, send troops to board the ship. No resistance organization in the entire ship is allowed to stay, all must be killed. After about 30 minutes, the First Order successfully occupied the diarrhea channel. At this point, the system says, Once ready, traverse. Could you please give me some time? I need to place an order for the Quat Intralia Power Dockyard in the name of the new Supreme Leader of the First Order. 
That's the Asserta class star dreadnought. As a first class dreadnought that only existed in the old official history, the excellent design of the Asserta class made me think. Let me tell you something. The assertive level has returned. Quote. Ah. Forget it. Anyway, I'm just making assertions. Complete within 30 minutes. Okay. Tongs a GE. 30 minutes later, after Lin Kai finished giving Quait BB, who was dissatisfied with the New Republic, the entire fleet and its surrounding space began to warp. During this period, Almost all of these 20 Revival class destroyers showed extremely frightened expressions. At this moment, Lin Kai, standing on the bridge, realized that he would have to constantly shuttle through the universe of various works with this fleet. The captains of the Revival class fleet must not be completely unaware of why after a period of time, the space around the fleet would distort and then move directly to the next world. Right. So Lin Kai twisted the facts and comforted the command team of the entire fleet, saying, Don't worry. The space distortion around the fleet this time is because we are currently testing a space shuttle that uses ancient Sith technology. Now we are about to reach another galaxy. Relax, young men of the Empire. About an hour later, the first fleet arrived in the world of the battleship Yamato 2199. At this moment, an extremely brutal war against humanity is taking place near Pluto. The defending Earth has put out all its assets to engage in a great battle with the Camilla fleet, but in terms of firepower and defense. The Earth fleet was almost completely destroyed by the Camilla fleet but when the Camilla fleet was hit by a human ship. The artillery fire of these weapons was forcefully ejected by advanced special coatings, and could not damage the Camilla fleet at all. Therefore, the Camilla fleet became even crazier, with each warship desperately pouring its firepower onto the human fleet. But at this moment, Lin Kai did not observe the situation on the battlefield, but rather asked about the lofty aspirations of a Chinese person. Captain. I don't have any lofty aspirations. I just want to quietly eat and wait for death. I wonder if the leader, who is also a traveler, can fulfill my wish. Please fulfill your wish. If there's nothing else, hurry up and leave. I need to talk to the other two travelers about their lofty aspirations. Okay. Captain, it's not the leader. Quote. After Lin Kai's inquiry, he found an elite human named Wen Penghui who enjoys watching science fiction movies and has lofty aspirations. He has a relatively small body of 1.75 meters and does not have any muscles. But he has a face full of mental fatigue. Obviously, it's due to rewards or not sleeping well but Lin Kai leans more towards the former. At this moment, Wen Penghui spoke hesitantly and said, Captain, the position of our first fleet should be Mars. So, are you greedy for Princess Shaxia's body? Go away. I'm not interested in dead people. If you want to dig her out, you can take some stormtroopers with you. Okay, Captain. In this way, Wen Penghui enthusiastically took a few white soldiers on a shuttle and left. Princess Shaxia, you must live. After digging her out of the soil, Wen Penghui brought his beloved Princess Shaxia to the best medical room of the supreme number at the fastest speed and said to the doctor, Big brother. Please do your best to treat this girl. She only has a trace of vital signs left. Quote dot. And I have some connection with the Supreme Leader of the First Order. At this moment, inside the bridge of the Supreme, Amatich Hekes was reporting the movements of the Yamato to Talin Kai. Supreme Leader, after investigation by our detection robots, we have found that the Yamato spacecraft has officially set sail and has now entered space. General Hux. Start the hyperspace engine now to reach the planet called Jupiter. 
Under your command, the thunder is finished. But by entering a hyperspace coordinate, you won't cause any trouble, will you? Quote. Yes. Subsequently, the Supreme and 20 Revival class destroyers broke through the ground and activated the hyperspace engine, causing the entire fleet to instantly disappear to Mars. Jupiter, the planktonic continent of Gamelas. This vast land floating in Jupiter, S sky is the size of an entire Australia, and at this moment, a group of magnificent triangular warships are parked above this vast land above the floating continent. The most prominent one among them must be the flagship of the first fleet, the Supreme. At this moment, inside the bridge of the Supreme, Lin Kai's system has finally released a task. Task 1. Give all members of the Yamato a commanding hand. Task 2. Destroy the Gamala's exploration fleet. Task reward. Settle the credit points owed by the host to the system before. Seeing this reward, Lin Kai couldn't help but say, Kylo Lun is only worth this little money. Quote. Like the original plot, Yamato was pulled by Jupiter's gravity and forced to land on a floating continent. Although the Yamato was far away from the first fleet, everyone inside the Yamato bridge could still directly observe the massive hull of the Supreme Supreme, which was over 60 kilometers wide. With the naked eye, on the bridge of the Yamato, ancient Jin nervously asked Captain Akada 13, Captain, how should we respond? Quote, the giant warship with a width exceeding 60 kilometers may not be completely destroyed even if hit directly by a wave gun. At this moment, as a senior member of the Earth Space Navy, Akada 13 solemnly said, The current enemies on Earth have exhausted us to deal with, and we have no need to actively provoke another civilization. Even if this triangular warship has no combat capability and is only a cargo ship, we cannot actively launch an attack. At this moment, Deputy Captain Makita, who was shocked by the huge volume of the Supreme, also said. Yes, the civilization built by such a huge ship must be more advanced than us. Now that Gameras has caused us humans enough suffering, there is no need to provoke a civilization that may be even stronger than Gamera's. If possible, I really want to pilot this warship and turn Camilla into a mess. In ancient times, it was said, Daisuke Shima, Captain, do we need to communicate with each other? After careful consideration, Okita Shisan finally said, we will not engage in communication for now. If the other warship initiates a communication request, we will accept it. Quote. Just as everyone on the Yamato was still discussing the supreme number, Lin Kai suddenly realized that the first task had already been completed. Obviously, the massive hull of the supreme is enough to leave a deep impression on the Yamato and make it unforgettable for a lifetime. Just as Lin Kai was still daydreaming, the radar monitor of the Supreme Supreme suddenly reported. Supreme Leader, radar detected four unidentified warships. Fire at those warships. Quote, the commander of the Gamala's fleet on the other side believed that today would definitely be the worst day of his life. To be honest, Gamala's wanted to conquer an indigenous civilization that had just entered space which can be said to be very simple. But a giant warship with a width exceeding 60 kilometers is absolutely impossible for such an indigenous civilization to possess. So, these few attempts to conquer an indigenous people and encounter a stronger civilization than Gamala's have really been unlucky for eight lifetimes. He, who was usually extremely arrogant, immediately ordered a retreat but a emerald green explosive beam turned the entire ship into a fireworks display. Then, the other three ships also received equal treatment. At this moment, an operator inside the bridge reported, Supreme Leader, 
The opposing warship is planning to fire and destroy this continent and let us temporarily leave here. What should we do? Continue to stop here. On the other side, a pale blue beam gushed out from the bow of the Yamato, and in the blink of an eye, violent energy scattered and swept across the entire continent. With the powerful power of the wave cannon, the continent the size of Australia began to disintegrate and completely disappeared into the sky of Jupiter. Several important personnel inside the bridge of the Yamato vessel watched as the supreme being hit unscathed by the residual waves of the wave cannon, and directly exploded. Inside the bridge, Akada 13 was the first to speak. Everyone, you have also seen the unidentified triangular warships facing the power of the fluctuating cannon waves remain motionless. After the violent explosion, not only was the largest warship unscathed, but after a violent explosion, the entire fleet did not lose a single warship, indicating the advanced level of their warships. So we didn't take the initiative to fire at them before, it was the right decision. At this moment, Nanbu jumped out and said, Captain Okita, these alien warships can withstand the aftershocks of the wave cannon without being damaged. If they launch an attack on Earth in the future, it will be the end of the world. So, let's use the wave cannon as much as possible now and destroy this fleet in one fell swoop. Quote, Akada 13 exuded a calm and self-righteous aura and said, enough. No one is allowed to mention anything about this alien fleet again. Otherwise I will be sent to the confinement room. On the other side, with the full treatment of several doctors in the medical room of the Supreme, Princess Sasha's vital signs finally stabilized. Under the powerful technology of Star Wars, doctors have determined that Princess Sasha will wake up within an hour. After assigning a nurse who was the best at taking care of patients to Princess Shaxia, the doctors slowly left for the lunch they had missed. After scanning several state-of-the-art life monitoring instruments, it was found that Princess Shaxia's vital signs had reached a normal state. She slowly turned around and planned to find a chair to sit down and continue taking care of Princess Shaxia. At this moment, Sasha slowly opened her eyes and looked around with surprised eyes, then said to the nurse, I want to see your commander. Quote. Chapter 3. Destroying Pluto Base. You are listening at novelfull.audio. After learning that Princess Sasha had awakened. When Penghui took a shuttle to the medical station where Princess Sasha was placed and requested that two white soldiers release him to communicate with Princess Sasha. Princess Shaxia, what can I do for you? I also want to ask you guys. Why did you tie me up to this warship? I think my actions were just self-defense, and none of you are like good people. What was the intention of kidnapping me? And how did you know my name? Princess Sasha, do I look very like a bad person? When your spaceship fell to the ground due to a malfunction, I personally taught you to take it to the medical station. Also, Sasha, you have a big misunderstanding of us. If we are really a group of bad people, then when you wake up, we should start interrogating you directly. Think about it. If we didn't save you, would you still be alive now? Quote, you seem to be quite right. Hey, no. How could you save me for no reason? If you have no intention, I don't believe it. Actually, I am a very kind person. We happen to be conducting military training on this planet, and during the training, we happened to discover your spaceship that had an accident. I couldn't bear to watch your beautiful girl die so tragically on this planet. At that time, I wanted to do something good that I could, so I brought you to the medical station on this ship. Quote, what about the fluctuation core that my sister entrusted me to give to the earthlings? It shouldn't have been taken by you, right? This cannot be given to you. 
This is something that my sister entrusted me with to save the earthlings, and you must not take it away. Princess Shaxia, our first order will not do such immoral things. Perhaps the core of the wave you mentioned has already been taken by the earthlings. Gamalus. Inside the command tower of Pluto base. Commander Gale's holographic image appeared inside the command tower. Upon learning of the news of the human warship's superluminal speed and the destruction of the supply base, he cursed loudly, Shuras, are you talking in your sleep? How could a human warship completely destroy the entire supply base? What are you doing to eat? Quote, Shuras received a scolding from Commander Gale and replied with displeasure, Commander Gale, the human warship has broken through the speed of light, and this is absolutely true. And there is also a super fleet of over 20 warships appearing over our supply base, with the flagship being at least 50 kilometers long. Shut up. Do you think I, as the commander of the Galactic Army, can report such an outrageous matter to the Imperial Star Command? I can only report it to His Excellency the President if you provide a decent report. Do you understand what I mean? I will give you a few beautiful words on it to help you rise from second class to first class gamillions. Do you understand? It's the correct report. Shuras. Quote. After saying that, Gale's hologram began to disappear. At this time, Shuras, who had eaten shit on his face, complained that he didn't understand anything. Subsequently, the opponent issued an order to retrieve the image of Jupiter. Shuras muttered to himself, what kind of weapon could have caused this? Is it that unidentified giant warship? Quote. Speaking, Shuras looked at his subordinates and ordered, take out most of the power from the entire base to monitor that unidentified fleet. Quote, as for the Yamato, just send a few reconnaissance planes for remote monitoring. Yes, like the original plot, Yamato's condenser partially begins to melt due to the impact of the firing of the undulating cannon. Helpless to go to Enceladus to collect the necessary minerals for repairing the condenser. While mining was underway there, Gamalus directly dispatched several tanks and a warship to attack the Yamato. Watching the Yamato under attack, Lin Kai ordered a hyperspace jump. Crush all the gamers who attack humans to earn some credit points. After all, even small mosquitoes are meat. Due to the fact that only a few tanks and one warship were involved in Gamilus' attack, the First Order fleet only dispatched TIE fighter jets, which easily dismantled the attack. At this moment, the radar monitor suddenly said, Supreme Leader. Gamers dispatched over a hundred space warships from Pluto base towards Enceladus. Send me an order to order the First Order fleet to directly destroy all the warships in front of them at the best angle, as if it's a holiday ahead of schedule. Quote, quickly, under the attack of the First Fleet, all those pitifully small Camilla fleets turned into a ball of fireworks. Later, Lin Kai invaded the communication system of Pluto's base. At the same time, the commander of the Gamala's Pluto base slammed into the table with an angry expression, incompetent and furious. Just as he was frantically smashing the table, the holographic projection communication device in front of him suddenly flashed, and then Lin Kai's figure appeared. Lin Kai said casually, Gamera's scum, just now your warship flew towards Enceladus for no reason intending to attack our army. Now I demand that all gamers commit suicide. Otherwise, I will completely destroy the Pluto base. This, the commander broke through the defense on the spot, and the owner of this unknown fleet looks so much like an earthling. Then the commander shouted loudly on the spot, even if you blow up our home planet. Quote dot, our great gamers will not yield to you these alien bastards. 
shocked. Even the commander of the Pluto base, who is greedy for life and afraid of death, dared not commit suicide with all members of the base. Quickly, the Destiny-class Star Destroyer of the First Fleet of the First Order jumped directly into hyperspace and launched an orbital bombing on the planet that Lin Kai once thought was filled with Yama. Kings. Accompanied by the deafening explosion simulated by the sound simulator, the Pluto base was directly detonated by the orbital bombing of the Terminator. And then the entire base experienced a violent explosion. As the Terminator continued to fire, the entire crust of Pluto was completely melted, and the Pluto base completely lost its ability to use planetary bombs to bomb Earth. Humans on Earth could also breathe a sigh of relief. Just as the Terminator melted Pluto's crust, Lin Kai slowly said to the communication personnel, take the initiative to contact the Yamato and invite him to our warship as guests. Quote, at this moment, the people on the Yamato account who received the text message are all focusing their attention on Akada Shisan. Now, every decision made by Akada 13 is related to the fate of the entire human race. After careful consideration, Akada 13 firmly said, reply to that alien fleet, we accept their invitation. Quote dot. Captain. Are we really going to board those alien warships? Once we leave, Yamato will lose command. What should we do if aliens forcibly keep us? The southern crew said with concern. Faced with concerns from the south, Akada Shigeru replied, they don't need to resort to such measures. Firstly, their fleet strength far exceeds ours. In the face of such a huge power gap, even experienced commanders find it difficult to win. Nowadays, if that fleet is determined to kill us, it doesn't need to be so complicated. They invited us to board the warship, more likely for the sake of undulating the gun's skills. Quote, if we can exchange this technology for the help of alien fleets to safely deliver us to Iskander, it would definitely be a good thing. Quote, after all, who can guarantee that the Yamato with its wave cannon will definitely reach Iskander and find a way to save humanity? After listening to it, the southern part said with some emotion. Ultimately, we are still too weak. Captain Okuta sorted out the required wave gun techniques for this exchange in just over 10 minutes. At this moment, the captain, who was tasked with reviving humanity, boarded a shuttle and arrived at the hangar of the Supreme. Lin Kai, who welcomed Okita 13 in advance at the hangar, said with a smile on his face. Welcome to the Supreme, friends from Earth. Since you have arrived here, don't limit yourself to the hangar. Let's take a look at the powerful strength of our galactic empire. As he spoke, Lin Kai took out the pre-prepared information on the Empire's super weapons and demonstrated the power of the Empire. The first spherical space station you see is the Death Star built by our Empire. His main cannon is a super laser cannon focused by Keba crystals. The Death Star you see is Death Star I. Its diameter is 160 kilometers and it has been built for 19 years. During the Empire period, technology was not mature in order to penetrate the planetary shield and destroy the entire planet together. The construction process of Death Star got stuck with the super laser cannon. After all, Death Star I was a major project decades ago. After listening, Akada was shocked 13 times. Previously, he believed that warships like the Supreme were already the top weapons of the enemy, S civilization, but he did not expect that the enemy could build such a large scale space station decades ago. This greatly exceeded Akada Shigeru's expectations and gave him a deeper understanding of the power of the Galactic Empire. At this moment, Akada 13 spoke slightly hesitantly and asked Lin Kai, 
Mr. Lin Kai, may I ask what your name is? Quote dot. Lin Kai smiled and replied, feel free. Quote. After answering Okita 13, Lin Kai didn't care what he thought and continued to introduce. This is the Starkiller base, which was transformed from a planet. A dark energy ray cannon has been deployed above the base that can easily destroy five planets with planetary shields. Quote. But not long ago, its weaknesses were destroyed by that damn resistance organization, causing the super weapon that had been built for a huge amount of time to be destroyed. But I also successfully sent the group of resistance organizations scum to the first fleet to meet with the officers and soldiers at the Starkiller base. Quote, well, let's not talk about these sad things anymore. It's useless to talk about weapons that have already been destroyed. Now, I'll take you on a tour of the Supreme. Quote, on the other side is the presidential palace of Desla, the home planet of Gamalus. Dear subjects of the Galactic Empire, I always bear in mind the glory above my own head. It is the gift of patriotism and loyalty from all of you, to this country, to this planet, and to the entire great Galactic Empire. At this moment, I regard all of you as close friends and sincerely thank all the friends who have gathered here. Thank you all. Subsequently, the humans under the presidential palace shouted, Long live Camilla, long live President Desla. After finishing his speech, Desla turned back to his palace and said to Michaela Sellers-Teller, who was standing not far from the door, The manuscript is well written. Quote dot. Miji pulled back and said, Thank you for your praise, supreme glory. Quote dot. Humans are really stupid and easily tamed creatures. It's simply boring. Quote. President. The special program that follows has been prepared. Is that the previous fleet? Quote. Exactly. After receiving a satisfactory response, Desla stopped speaking and continued to move forward. At this moment, a burst of applause came, and as he looked at his ministers, Desla did not respond. Instead, he walked straight towards his throne. After he sat down, Vice President Radolf Heath spoke up. President. To celebrate the millennium anniversary of the Camilla Empire and the 103rd anniversary of the establishment of the Desla regime, on behalf of all the ministers. I offer you my sincere blessings. Thank you, Vice President. President, the Galactic Empire can be said to have the unparalleled universe. Now that we have completed the unification of the Magellanic Nebula and invaded the Milky Way, we are constantly expanding the Empire's territory. We believe that in the future, the power of the President will shine throughout the universe. He knows how to flatter. After the vice president finished flattering, the minister of military supply and defense, Bertie Tarran, spoke up and said, President, our assimilation policy is progressing smoothly, and now those who voluntarily submit are granted second, class subjects rights. This has become the cornerstone of imperial prosperity. Quote. After Bertie finished speaking, the director of the Central Army, Helm Jericho, flattered and said, it can be said to be a great achievement, a great achievement of God. Your Excellency the President and I, the Empire of Camilla, are invincible. Quote dot. Invincible gamers never loses. At this moment, the Commander-in-Chief of the Space Fleet, Gal Dietz, interjected. We must not be complacent about this, and the invasion of other civilizations into the edge of the Magellanic Cloud must not be taken lightly. Commander Dietz, what you're saying is that I'm talking nonsense. No, I'm just stating the facts as the fleet leader. Quote, at this moment, Staff Officer Guard Taran saw that the situation was not right and quickly spoke up. President. We can easily eliminate those barbarians. 
Now we have sent Lieutenant General Demol to annihilate the enemy. Is it the wolf of the universe? There is a possibility that it will live up to expectations and achieve success on time. Quote. All right, everyone. Tonight is to reward everyone's daily efforts. So I have prepared some special programs. Quote. After hearing Desla talk about the special program, Miguel stood up from the crowd and said, Lingguan, please watch the footage from the forefront of the empire. Quote. After hearing these words, the captain of the SS stood up with some confusion and said, Why are you looking at this? Quote. Dot. Miguel Le didn't show any interest and said directly, Because this is a game personally planned by the president. On the other hand, Captain Akada 13 of the Yamato successfully allowed the Yamato to temporarily stay in the hangar of the Supreme after ending a solar system ritual and a trade, during which someone even took a look at the deceased Princess Sasha with him. Without further ado, the Yamato was about to undergo a space jump, and the entire First Fleet had to enter that space together with the Yamato. During this process, the 60-kilometer-wide Supreme was barely able to enter that space with the assistance of 20 Fuxing-class ships and the Yamato. On the Gydrol-class battleship, the Chevalier. However, the commander did not seem to pay too much attention to the First Fleet, but instead focused on his daughter's holographic projection. Dad, can you come back after finishing your work? Mom and I are both worried about you, said the daughter obediently in the holographic projection. The president ordered us to die a glorious battle. I'm sorry, Hylard. Quote, Commander Shuras, General Gale's support supplies have arrived. How could it be? Really? Yes, Commander Shuras. We haven't been abandoned. Quote, Chapter 4. Forced Fun. You are listening at Novel Full Dot Audio. The holographic projection inside the Desla Presidential Palace flashed, and Gale's face, which looked similar to the zombies in Plants vs. Zombies, appeared again with extremely pleasing movements, forming a sharp contrast with President Desla sitting on the throne. I am Graham Gale, Commander of Galaxy Operations. This battle is personally commanded by the president, and it is an unparalleled honor. All right, Commander Gale, how's the thing I sent you? Sorry, those new types of torpedoes. Quote, it's a Desla torpedo, Michaela reminded from the side. Yes, yes, that batch of Tesla torpedoes has been equipped on the front line. Quote, with the end of the space jump. The Supreme is now 204,000 light years away from Earth. On the Yamato, Dr. Sado is conducting an examination on Akada Shizo. Captain, you have not been affected by hyperspace jumps at all, but you should also take more rest, Dr. Sado said. When watching anime, this doctor left the deepest impression on Lin Kai, because as a doctor in the original work, he loves to drink alcohol and his body is even better than Akada Shizo. At this moment, Shinji walked in and had a discussion with Akada Shigeru about whether to leave more room for humanity. Captain Okita believes that the cloud plan has been abandoned, so there is no need to reconsider the original plan. Shinjan believes that multiple plans lead to multiple paths. At this time, on the side of Gamalus, President, you can actually predict which galaxy they will come to. I truly admire you, Gail. Quote, it's not a big deal. I just casually analyzed the energy fluctuations and passed the time. So everyone, let's raise our glasses and pray that the aliens can struggle more. Quote, ha ha ha. President, you really love to joke. A minister who was a bit drunk said, President Desla, who saw this scene, pressed a button directly, causing the minister to fall and spoke up, saying, 
The empire of greater Camilla does not need such worthless goods. Looking back at the Supreme, the battleship commanded by Shuras spun and flew out of the leap, releasing their Desla torpedoes towards the Supreme. The Desla torpedo was intercepted directly by a heavy turbo laser gun shortly after it flew out, and the torpedo exploded, revealing a cloud of gas. That is the true face of the Desla torpedo. This is a gas-like life form with a self-proliferating system discovered in the Milbelia galaxy, which can absorb and convert energy to infinite proliferation. It can be said to be the ultimate biological weapon. Jellic looked at the constantly growing gas-like life form and excitedly said, Earthlings are really a group of bag rats. Quote. Next, we need to wait for the cat to collect the net. After hearing his words, Desla said with a half smile, No, I left a gap for them, and that's the star. Quote. Next, I want to see which way aliens will choose to die. At this moment, Inside the bridge of the Supreme, Lin Kai looked at this special gas and casually said, burn up those gases. Quote, accompanied by the sharp sounds simulated by the onomatopoeia, the target was accurately hit, and the gas was immediately engulfed by the high temperature of the explosive energy beam. Just like wanting to absorb the energy of a star in the original work, but being burned away by the star. At this time, Commander Gale saw such a scene, the corners of his mouth suddenly twitched, and then shouted at Shullers. Are you his mother a waste? The President's gas is almost being destroyed by the alien fleet. You're still watching the play on the side. Listening to Gale's words, Shuruza's face darkened. He had been scolded in front of Gale since this fleet appeared. And now the Desla torpedo has also been solved by this fleet. Even if I were to live and go back now, I would definitely die, and my wife and daughter would definitely be implicated. It would be better to die under the firepower of this fleet. So Shuras said, this ship will launch a final attack on alien civilization warships. For Camilla, at this moment, the other people inside the bridge also shouted, Let us perish together with Commander Shuras. Subsequently, the speed of the battleship Shuliwa began to accelerate, aiming its bow at the Supreme and rushing towards it at full speed. But at this moment, after the heavy turbo laser gun of the Supreme had eliminated these gaseous life forms, it also reacted. Watching the distance from the Supreme continue to shrink, Shuras slowly closed his eyes, tears streaming out of his moist eyes. In a daze, he seemed to see his wife and daughter, but in the end, an explosion engulfed him. On the other hand, with the explosion of the warship, the scene disappeared, and President Desla's special program was completely ruined. Then Commander Gale's holographic projection slowly turned around and faced Desla, anxiously saying, President, these are all Schultz's mistakes. Quote dot, that. I. Faced with Gale's explanation, Desla pressed the button on his throne again, and Gale's holographic projection also disappeared. Oh my. Everyone. What a wonderful battle. It can also be considered a fun special program. By the way, all the war victims of Heath have been given two consecutive levels of special promotion, and their families have been granted permanent status as subjects of gamblers. After hearing the president's words, Heath quickly stood up and answered, understood. Then Desla said lightly, so tonight's banquet ends here. Then he left here under the gaze of everyone. What is the name of that alien warship, Mihera? President. I'm not sure either. Then call him the Black Triangle. Okay. Inside the bridge of the Supreme. Lin Kai is looking at the task he doesn't quite understand. Task name. Tomb of the Universe. Task description. Melda Dietz is trapped in subspace. 
Please lead the first fleet to provide humanitarian assistance to him, with your own method. Please note that Melda Dietz must be alive. Task reward. 50 million credit points. Tongza GE. Why did First Order, as a villainous organization, provide humanitarian aid to the Gamera's people? Um. It seems like First Order, as a villainous organization, says that humanitarian aid is indeed a serious illness, so it should be changed to the system's requirement to do so. Forget it. Quote. Lin Kai had no choice but to have the first fleet jump with the Yamato again in order to gain credit. Just like the original plot, the Yamato soon malfunctioned, taking the entire first fleet into the unknown space depicted in the original plot. Leader. Our ship has received a communication request from the Gamala's warship. Is it connected? Quote. Connect. The content of the communication is similar to that in the original work, and Melda also flew over with a carrier-based aircraft, just like in the original work. Lin Kai looked at the light blue holographic projection of the carrier-based aircraft, thought about the original plot, and then spoke up. Send two Thai space superiority fighters to guide Melda's route. When Peng Hui behind him listened and directly communicated with the person in charge of the hangar. Soon, the two Thai, faux space superiority fighter jets in the hangar slowly rose up, and then left the hangar at an extremely fast speed. Not long after, two Thai, faux space superiority fighter jets approached the fighter jet piloted by Melda Dietz, and soon Melda was getting closer to the Supreme under the guidance of the two Thai, Foss. Faced with such a huge ship, Melda was completely attracted by the Supreme. After Melda entered the Supreme, the glass cover above the fighter slowly opened, and after taking off his breathing mask, he got off the plane. Melda saw a large group of stormtroopers wearing white armor standing around, with a group of tall quadruped walking machines next to them. The two explosive cannons installed on their heads proved that the tall walking machines were not vegetarians. Even when Melda got off the plane, she encountered such a welcome from the First Order. She didn't react for a moment and froze in place. Just as Melda was stunned, a military officer took the initiative to step forward and, with the help of a translator, revealed a disguised smile. He said, friends from Camilla, although you are not evil in the milky way. Anyway, it's inconvenient to talk in the hangar. Let's talk in the conference room. After speaking, the officer didn't wait for Melda to say anything before taking her to the conference room where Lin Kai was located. After undergoing a series of inspections in Melda, the officer finally displayed his identification code to open the door to the conference room. As the door to the conference room opened, Melda, who had entered, carefully scrutinized the technologically advanced conference room. Then, after calming down a bit, she asked, this should be Yamato, right? Upon hearing this, Lin Kai sneered and said, the ship you are currently on is called the Supreme. As for the Yamato you mentioned, it is lying in another hangar on this ship. Chapter 5. Edition of Three Revival Class Ships. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. After hearing Lin Kai's answer, Melda was momentarily stunned, but soon regained her composure and spoke up. It was impossible for the Earth to make such a huge warship. In our great Camilla's empire, there are also non-blue-skinned races like you, all of whom are inferior races from annexed countries and colonial planets, namely second-class citizens of Camilla's. Lin Kai heard the insult hidden in medal, s words and replied, then I suggest you never equate those incompetent trash with the most powerful fleet of the First Order. Otherwise you will truly know what regret is. Quote dot. Now I'll let you continue talking about the method you proposed.
Melda replied with a hint of contempt in her tone. Do you want me to trust an envoy who comes to negotiate with a gun? It's understandable. After all, it's people of your skin color who didn't issue a declaration of war and launched an attack first. A fanatical and belligerent race. It is obvious that this person thinks he knows the way to leave the subspace, so Lin Kai dare not touch her. However, in reality, Lin Kai was able to bring this cargo to the supreme number just to ask her for information about Gamelas. Lincoln retorted to Melda's words, saying, It's not uncommon for the chameleons to slaughter all the people of the planet for something. Also, if Lieutenant Melda comes, why don't you stay a little longer? Quote dot. Shortly after the conversation with Melda ended, the following events continued to unfold like the original plot. A light blue beam of light shot out from the bow of the Yamato, tearing open an unstoppable breach, and then the entire fleet quickly left the space. The task that could make Lin Kai a prophet was also successfully completed. At the same time, on the bridge of the Camila's battleship cruiser, the operator reported. Captain. Our side has successfully left that space. The captain looked at the majestic hull of the Supreme through a large screen and slowly issued an order. The entire ship is ready for battle. Send the return order to Lieutenant Melda. The Supreme is a commendable opponent. At this point, another operator reported. Friendly fleet ends jumping. Blue space gates suddenly appeared around the originally empty universe, and dark green Gamela's warships jumped out of the gates and appeared in front of the first fleet. Subsequently, the fleet began firing towards the most prominent Supreme rear. Then, the heavy turbo laser gun of the Supreme prepared for battle in advance fired a deadly emerald green beam of explosive energy. As soon as the powerful beam touched the battleship of Gamera's, the special coating that Gamera's was proud of seemed like a piece of paper in front of the beam. It was not uncommon for several warships to be sunk by a single beam of explosive energy. The poor Camilla fleet was submerged by the green ocean surging out of the Supreme, and under such strong firepower, the Camilla fleet's counterattack was still pale and powerless. At this moment, the Camilla battleship cruiser suddenly appeared with Gale's holographic projection. Gale said angrily, EX-178, you are on the ray axis of our ship. Don't affect our ship's attack, move away quickly. At this moment, the operator on the side couldn't bear to watch anymore and couldn't help but interject. Major General Gale, the daughter of Commander Dietz is still on the Black Triangle. Gale was momentarily taken aback, then laughed and said, It's okay, fire. Quote. Immediately, his figure disappeared on the big screen, and the radar officer reported. Friendly troops are firing. Dodge. Quickly dodge. Subsequently, the light inside the bridge gradually turned red and beams of blood-red positrons hit the warship, causing a violent explosion. Turning the entire ship into space debris for Gamera's. At this moment, the flagship of the Camilla fleet, Nagel, watched as the battleship cruiser exploded violently and said to his deputy, The missing ship we are searching for, EX-178, has been sunk by a black triangle, right? Quote dot. After hearing these words, the deputy quickly replied. Understood. Then Gale ordered loudly, Great. All warships gather fire on the Black Triangle. Quote. Just as Gale finished speaking, a emerald green explosive beam brushed past his flagship, and then the battleship experienced a violent vibration. The radar officer located on the flagship of the Camilla fleet reported in some panic. Our ship's space jumping engine is damaged and there is a possibility of losing space jumping ability in a short period of time. 
Feeling the vibration of the battleship under his feet, Gale panicked and looked at the radar officer, saying, Quick, retreat. Quote dot. Start jumping now and leave this area. Under Gale's urging, the engine of this flagship began to operate. A slender ion beam sprayed out and successfully completed a space jump before being hit again. At this point, except for the flagship that successfully escaped from Gale, this Camilla fleet has been completely annihilated. Unlike the fleeing Gale, Lin Kai looked at his skyrocketing credit score and exclaimed on the spot, Psycho Ni Hai Iron Duck Big. Then, with excitement, Lin Kai opened the system mall. Due to the system's generous offer of a 50% discount on all items in the mall today, Lin Kai, who was beyond his control, directly chose the StarCraft Dreadnought. A Serta class Star Dreadnought. 1. 25 billion system credit points, excluding Super Laser Cannon. Executor level Star Dreadnought. 1. 5 billion system credit points. Sovereign class Interstellar Dreadnought. 1. 8 billion system credit points. Eclipse class Super Destroyer. 2 billion system credit points. At such a high price, Lin Kai only looked at it for the first time. His face changed when he was shocked by the high price, and he immediately began to row up to find warships he could afford to expand his fleet. Not long after, he found his old friend, the Revival-class Star Destroyer, which was the largest type of Star Destroyer in the entire First Fleet. Fuxing-class Destroyer. 150 million system credit points. Introduction. The Revival-class Star Destroyer is an upgraded version of the Imperial-class Star Destroyer manufactured by Quatentra. The Revival-class Star Destroyer is approximately 2,916 meters long and 500 meters high. Similar to the Imperial-class Star Destroyer during the Empire era, it has a dagger design and is equipped with a total of 19,000 officers and 55,000 soldiers. In terms of weapons, this type of ship is equipped with over 1,500 guns, including turbo laser guns, ion guns, and point defense laser guns. The heavy turbo laser gun of the Revival class destroyer can provide greater firepower and faster charging speed than the Empire class. But because this advanced turbo laser gun requires Keba crystal as the focusing crystal, only a few Revival class destroyers in the First Order are equipped with this weapon, which is the same as the high, end and castrated versions of mobile phones. In addition, this type of warship is faster than the TIE Space Advantage fighter in straight lines and at full speed. This type of warship missile launcher can track and destroy small and flexible ships. Note. In the worldview of Star Wars, the Revival-class Star Destroyer, as a substitute for the Imperial-class Star Destroyer, did not bring true revival to the Empire. So, under the leadership of the new Supreme Leader of the First Order, can the Galactic Empire move towards true revival? By the way, all the Revival-class Star Destroyers you purchased here are castrated versions, and you will have to pay for the high-end version. Closing square bracket. The selling price of this thing has reached 150 million system credit points, which is enough to show that the construction cost of the Revival-class Star Destroyer is really high. And it is also really strong. At this time, Lin Kai, who was eager to expand the fleet size, only gave a slight consideration and decisively bought three castrated versions of the Revival-class Star Destroyer. Are you sure you want to purchase three castrated Revival-class Star Destroyers? Are you sure to pay 450 million system credit points? Closing square bracket. Payment successful. At the moment when the words, successful payment, appeared, three dagger-shaped warships suddenly plunged into the first fleet in the deep universe. 
But the sudden appearance of the three Revival-class destroyers was a complete shock to the First Fleet, who did not understand the existence of the system. Fortunately, Lin Kai explained that these three Revival-class destroyers were specially deployed here to avoid the defeat of the First Order in the original universe. In addition, the Revival-class destroyers were extremely valuable which prevented these three Revival-class destroyers from being destroyed by friendly forces. At this moment, Wen Penghui lay on the fiberglass of the Supreme, with a hint of surprise in his tone, saying, Three Revival-class star destroyers. Looking at Wen Penghui's stunned expression at this moment, Lin Kai smiled and said, Li is not powerful, Lin Ji Yi. After hearing Lin Kai's words, Wen Penghui spoke with a hint of embarrassment and said, Supreme Leader, I would like to name these three Revival Class Star Destroyers. Check in verbally, but I refuse. But the leader, no. But, now we need to follow the plot to find that asteroid with the trouble of finding that dimensional submarine. Enter the hyperspace coordinates and let's go. What about Melda? Take her to the interrogation room. If you can't find anything, then let's give her something delicious to eat and drink. In the original work, her character is quite good, and I quite like it. The dimensional submarine, as a battleship that only obeyed the president of the Camilla Empire, Desla, and Admiral Gal Dietz, may have been based on a certain type of submarine 8 from Germany 3. And its combat style is similar to that of submarines in World War II. This type of submarine can lurk in a very safe subspace during combat, just like a real submarine lurking underwater. When an attack is needed, the periscope can be raised to observe the specific situation of the target in normal space and then the equipped torpedo can be used to attack the target. However, it is possible that the manufacturing process of dimensional submarines was quite complex, resulting in the Gamala's Empire, which had over 100,000 ordinary warships, currently having only one such dimensional submarine. Now the First Fleet has added several new ships, and they have also jumped through hyperspace to the small star belt where they encountered dimensional submarines in the original work. The current First Fleet is clearly not solved solely by dimensional submarines. It is worth mentioning that the dimensional submarine UX-01 is equipped with the Desla torpedo, which only appeared once in the original work. But even so, the First Fleet easily burned down the special gaseous life forms in the torpedoes as before, and the first round of shooting completely destroyed the entire asteroid belt. The periscope, which also used dimensional submarines to detect things outside of subspace, was destroyed. At the same time, a battleship named Shangri-La, a Hadora-class battleship, was sailing in an unknown area. Mironier Hui reports. It is expected to arrive on the planet Balloon at 7.30 local time. Miguel said to Mironier, I heard that the President's UX-01 was injured by an alien warship, so now is our chance. Merennial, we can implement that thing now, understand. Chapter 6. Return Boundary Points. You are listening at novelfull.audio. The Supreme Conference Room. The high-ranking members of the First Order gathered together to discuss how to deal with the Camilla fleet in the future. Along the way, they discussed the Yamato, which was spinning wildly in space. In the conference room, only Lin Kai knew that the witch incident had begun, but Lin Kai was not very worried. In the original work, this witch pretended to be a god and played tricks for almost an entire episode, and her final death was not killed by magic attacks. She could easily send hundreds of stormtroopers to solve it, so naturally there is no need to worry too much. This meeting is just a discussion on how to harvest more Gamala's warships. 
After hundreds of marksmanship authorized stormtroopers entered the Yamato, according to the internal structure diagram provided by Lin Kai. I easily found out the storage location of the fluctuation core, and then quickly rushed to the tail of the Yamato. Faced with the interference of the witch illusion, the members of the stormtrooper team, who were wearing armor and had exceptional marksmanship, directly invited him to eat explosive guns. After advancing all the way, the members of the stormtroopers successfully reached the tail of the Yamato and removed the fluctuating core. Blocked the space jump of Yamato. Then the witch Mironier became anxious and revealed her figure directly. Subsequently, the explosive gun firepower in the hands of the stormtroopers poured out, providing the witch with a free death service. Unfortunately, the witch did not give a rating for this service. Gamera's operator reported, soul connection interrupted, Agent Linkai's spirit failed to return, and the intelligence transmitted has been saved. At this moment, Michaela looked at Mironier, who was dying without closing her eyes. She reached out her hand and slowly closed her eyes, tears streaming from the corners of her eyes. In this way, I am left alone. On the other side, Demol looked at the warship flying towards the distance and slowly spoke up. That relic was left by the race that created these doors. There are rumors that she is a descendant of that race. Gale, standing next to Demol, asked with suspicion, after all, what is she here for? Quote, Demol replied, how can ordinary people understand what a witch should do? Quote dot. Gale was stunned for a moment after hearing this, then glared angrily at Maidel and said, who are you saying is a mortal? Quote dot. After Gale finished speaking, with a belly full of fire, he turned around and left. He then had a holographic call with a high-ranking official named Jericho. Jericho took out a cigarette, and the maid beside him immediately helped him light it. He smiled and hugged the maid into his arms, saying to Gale, have they all set their sights on the black triangle? Quote dot. The timing is just right. What do you mean? You don't need to know. Quote. On the other side of the Gamalus command center, Gale asked, will the president come to inspect the planet balloon? Quote, Demol looked at the big screen in front and replied, according to Admiral Dizzy, it seems like a secret inspection. Gale said excitedly, so we need to quickly get ready to welcome you. The one-eyed general on the other side said, Completely destroying the Black Triangle is the best way to welcome the president. At this moment, the general on the other side, grinding his nails with a knife, immediately said. Our firepower reconnaissance should have exhausted their energy. An officer added, now is the time to send troops. Quote dot. The Black Triangle is heading towards the Bimera solar system. That's right. Demol continued, and there was also the neutron star Carol 163 between Yamato, Blackwings, and Bimera. If the Black Triangle wants to jump, due to the gravity of Carol 163, they will be displaced and should end up at one of these five points. Then, Demol turned around, holding the baton in his hand, and disregarding Gale's skeptical gaze, he said, Let's aim for that moment and set up the fleet in these five places. Quote, as soon as you discover the Black Triangle, gather all the troops quickly and do your best to destroy it. Gale looked somewhat surprised at the other people standing up in front of the round table, and then at Demol with a calm expression on his face. Demol also laughed at this moment as if he had seen the scene of the huge warship being attacked by his legion and breaking into space fireworks under strong firepower. And at this time, the good president of Gamalus, Desla, is on his side. The operator said, connect the system satellite and open the wave gate of Balloon Star. 
There is still 20 gek left until the gate opens. Quote dot. Gek. One of the time units unique to Camila's. President. This ship is about to enter the gate of fluctuation and will soon reach the planet Balloon after passing through it. The captain of this warship told Desla. At this moment, the operator reported in some panic that the main engine was abnormal and the internal pressure was constantly increasing. If this continues, it will exceed the critical value of the thruster. After hearing these words, Desla changed her calm image and the glass in her hand fell directly to the ground, followed by a violent explosion of the entire warship. President Desla died as a result. At this moment, the entire fleet on the side of the First Fleet, led by the Supreme, was ready to eliminate the Camilla fleet in the Bimeralda solar system. Now, the entire fleet is preparing to perform a hyperspace jump to surprise Demol. Subsequently, the 32 engines at the stern of the Supreme ship emitted a dazzling light, and 32 meteor-like tail flames appeared. Immediately, the Supreme ship disappeared into this area with the entire fleet. When the first fleet arrived in the Bimeralda stellar system, the numerous Gamera's fleet appeared on the radar of the Supreme. Looking at the Gamera's fleet on the radar, Lin Kai smiled and slowly ordered. All ships are free to shoot. It's best not to hit the Zeragut class battleship named Demol 3. After receiving the order to allow the attack, more than 20 destroyers from the first fleet, who had already set their best angle to confront the enemy, directly poured out the green explosive beam ocean towards Demol's fleet. The fleet commanded by Demol was also unwilling to be outdone in retaliation with positron guns, but even under the dense positron beam, the shields of each ship in the first fleet remained strong. On the other hand, Demaya's fleet has a burst of explosive energy beam that penetrates the armor of warships like a string of tomatoes on sticks, turning warships into beautiful space fireworks. Faced with this scene, even Demol, who had experienced countless battles, couldn't help but frown. But he didn't have time to marvel at the power of the alien warship when a burst energy beam hit Demol III under his feet, and then the Zeragut was left with an extra hole. Demol felt the violent vibration coming from his feet and ordered in a panic. Do your best to repair it. At this moment, Gale hurriedly ran out and said to Demol, Commander Demol, our country has sent a communication. Quote, Demol, who was commanding the repair of the warship, suddenly heard Gale's voice behind him and casually replied. Let's talk later. But this is the first level emergency communication from the presidential palace. From the presidential palace. Quote, Upon hearing that it was an emergency communication from the presidential palace, Dima's intuition as a soldier told him that something significant had happened over there. So he changed his tone. Connect immediately. The bridge of the supreme ship. Lin Kai looked through the transparent steel at the Demol flagship, which had already undergone a space jump and returned to the territory of Camilla, and said nonchalantly, there will be more credit points waiting for me to harvest during the military parade in the future. Quote, now let's go play on the planet Bimiras 4 first, and take this opportunity to communicate and exchange ideas with everyone on the Yamato. Chapter 7. Battle of Baron. 1. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Lin Kai looked through the transparent steel in front of him at the faint blue halo of the planet and couldn't help but sigh, is this Bimera 4? Quote, it does look much better than that yellow poisonous ball. Later, Lin Kai turned his head to look at Hux beside him and asked, General, has the detection robot been lowered? Quote, Hekes looked at the holographic projection of Bimera 4 and replied, Supreme Leader, it's already set up. On the other side, 
A military officer surnamed Wen from the Supreme Number had already formed a conflict with the loosely disciplined members of the Yamato Number. The protagonist Gu Jin in the original drama asked Wen Penghui curiously, Colonel Wen, is there only one warship like the Supreme in your galactic empire? Lin Kai felt embarrassed following a big soldier behind his buttocks, so he gave Wen Penghui the rank of colonel. However, Wen Penghui had no authority at all, just the rank of colonel. Closing parenthesis. Looking at the curious ancient times, Wen Penghui pretended to be profound and replied, No way, our empire began to decline after the Battle of Endor. The strength of the First Order you see now is only a trace of what it was during the Empire era. At that time, in order to maintain its dominant position and sovereignty, the Empire manufactured a large number of Imperial-class star destroyers. These destroyers are 1,600 meters long and have a total of 25,000 ships, making them one of the most powerful in the entire Empire. They possess powerful firepower and shields, which are important forces in maintaining security in the star region. And the only emperor of our galactic empire, Shif Palpatine. Before becoming emperor, he was the speaker of the Republic. After seeing the decay behind the Republic that had been eroded by the River of Time, he carried out a great purge. The Galactic Republic is officially renamed as the Galactic Empire. At this point, Wen Penghui placed his hand on his chest to show respect for the Emperor. Subsequently, Wen Penghui added two zeros to the reign of Palpatine and said, and our Emperor allowed the Empire to exist for 1,900 years, which is much more powerful than President Desla. 1900. The ancient people repeated in surprise. There is no doubt that the Emperor of our Empire ruled the entire galaxy in 1900. I have no need to deceive you at all. Quote. At the same time, a landing ship dispatched by Lin Kai also returned smoothly after obtaining the core of the wave. Inside the bridge, Lin Kai looked at the deep starry sky outside the transparent steel and said to Hux, General Hux, gather all the officers of the fleet. Quote dot, I have something to say. Shortly after Lin Kai's order, the fleet broadcast sounded. The Supreme Leader has ordered that all captains of the First Fleet come to the conference room of the Supreme. Quote, a few minutes later, the captains of each Revival Class Star Destroyer in the conference room sat in their seats. This was one of the few meetings of all the captains of the First Fleet, and none of them were absent. Lin Kai looked at the 23 officers present and didn't show any interest. He opened the door and said, according to the intelligence we have received, Gamalus will conduct a major military parade on the planet Balloon in the near future. Our goal for this operation is to sink all the ships involved in this parade. Quote. Subsequently, the holographic projector in the conference room flashed and released a holographic image of the planet Balloon. This is the planet Balloon which has an energy core at its center. Destroying it would trigger a violent explosion, with an expected energy output that would destroy more than two-thirds of the parade ships. However, when we arrive at Balloon, do not destroy the energy core from the beginning. Let these countless warships give us experience in first-order large-scale fleet warfare. Quote. After our fleet arrived at Baron and jumped out of hyperspace, we directly supplied the reactor output to the battleship engine and collided with the Camilla fleet. This sudden attack would surely cause chaos in the Camilla fleet's formation. Afterwards, our fleet's firepower was fully unleashed, and no missile on the ship was left to be fired. Subsequently, 23 Revival-class destroyers immediately flew around the Supreme to form a defensive circle. During the battle, the fleet followed my orders to release its formation, 
allowing the Supreme to have enough space to bomb the Camilla fleet. Gamalasna's side. At this moment, Jellic, who had successfully assassinated Desla, looked at the huge and magnificent fleet in front of him and couldn't help but exclaim, what a grand scene this is. Quote, so majestic, so spectacular, it is precisely my galactic empire. Then he adjusted his mood and opened his mouth to the communicator. The glorious soldiers of Camilla, my brave comrades. I have an extremely painful and sorrowful news today, which I have to convey to all of you, who have gathered the honor of my great Gamalas. That's right, the leader of the Supreme Empire, our great president. Aberut Desla left us, and the marshal who had deceived him all shed tears. After Jacqueline finished speaking, over 10,000 Camilla warships were filled with voices of disbelief that President Desla had passed away. How did this supposed military parade turn into a feast? At the moment of national crisis, who should lead the empire? In the face of this noble mission, my soul is trembling. While deeply immersed in sorrow with everyone, I hereby swear. Quote, I will inherit the will of the deceased president, while hiding his passing, I will punish the treacherous ministers hidden in the empire with the hammer of justice. Quote, land of ambition, please fight side by side with me. We will attack the imperial star of Paris, recapture the presidential palace, and kill all those unruly officials and thieves. Leave no one behind, be resolute. Quote, just as Jericho spoke of the rise, a triangular battleship in the ancient city sounded a huge alarm and jumped out of hyperspace, and the entire fleet's sub-light speed engines began to operate. Subsequently, the originally stationary warship was raised to an extremely fast speed and collided with the Gamala's warships. Accompanied by a loud sound simulated by a sound simulator, the battleship Gamala's, which was blocking the front of the first fleet, was instantly destroyed by the collision. The Gamala's fleet, which quickly reacted, began to dodge one after another. However, due to Jericho's request for the fleet to set up a parade formation, the entire fleet was unable to effectively dodge the impact. Instead, their own warships collided, making the fleet consisting of over 10,000 warships even more chaotic. Despite this, Jericho ordered that the first fleet be sunk at all costs. Under the command of Jalik to sink all the first fleet despite accidentally injuring his allies, the red positron beams fired by the Gamala's warship flew everywhere on the entire battlefield. Many positive electron beams directly sank their own warships, making the entire battlefield even more chaotic. But the combat literacy of the Gamalus Navy is still very high, although no one expected the first fleet to jump directly into hyperspace to their own parade ceremony at the beginning. But the chaotic situation of the Camilla fleet only existed two minutes after the first fleet jumped out of hyperspace. And now the Camilla fleet has also begun an organized counterattack after suffering huge losses. A large number of positron beams spewed out from the muzzle of the Camilla battleship. Flying towards the Supreme located in the center of the epidemic prevention circle with a force of cutting through space. However, the positron guns that rained down on the first fleet were all blocked by the deflector shields opened by the Fuxing class destroyers that formed the defense circle. At this moment, the various weapons of the entire dreadnought, the Supreme Supreme, in the center of the defense circle, were tuned to the extreme. Under the control of gunners, Thousands of heavy turbo laser guns on the Dreadnought were pouring powerful destructive power into the Camilla fleet in a frenzy. Each explosive beam drew a straight line in the deep universe and flew towards the Garmira's fleet with a force of a thousand soldiers. At the moment when a large number of explosive energy beams came into contact with the Camilla warship, 
Each warship was pierced from head to tail and exploded into a large number of fragments. At the same time, the Supreme also launched a large number of anti-ship missiles. Those missiles quickly flew away from the dreadnought-like bees rushing out of a hive to sting people, heading towards the enemy. At the moment of contact with the armor of the enemy ship, a huge fireball capable of engulfing more than 10 Gamala's warships was generated. As the battleships of Gamala's were destroyed one after another, Jericho also ordered in some panic. Concentrate all firepower to break through the defense circle composed of enemy fleets, and all carrier-based aircraft loaded with bombs to take off and attack the Black Triangle. Chapter 8. Battle of Baron. 2. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. A DWG-229 Malanka fighter attack aircraft with a wing layout stands on the first deck of a Gypalon-class multi-layer space carrier. Pilot Volk sits in the cockpit of this fighter attack aircraft, as the catapults are activated. This combat attack aircraft with a wingspan of nearly 30 meters instantly turned into a lightning bolt and rushed out of the deck flying towards the defensive circle composed of more than 20 warships. Quickly, other Capellan-class aircraft carriers in the fleet also quickly ejected one DWG-229 Malanka fighter attack aircraft from the deck. And the circular design of the Pomeranian-class assault aircraft carrier in the fleet also released 20 of the same fighter attack aircraft from those four corners. A Revival-class destroyer in the defense circle quickly noticed this formation of combat attack aircraft. More than a dozen defensive laser cannons quickly aimed at this formation of fighter jets, and then the muzzle shone with a dazzling green light, like the eye of death. Releasing the innate fear of death from creatures towards the formation led by Volk. That green flame, symbolizing death for Volk, turned the entire fighter jet into a fireball when it touched one of his formation's attack planes. A large number of fragments are floating in the icy universe. Volker and others could only constantly change their flight trajectories, but even so, the combat attack aircraft formation continued to downsize. At this time, the pilot of a Malanka can't help cursing in the communication channel when watching the fighter planes with him being destroyed one by one. Is Jerick his mother crazy? He's completely asking us to give up our lives for nothing and let the alien fleet see the fireworks. At this time, Volker, as the captain, also said, what the hell does Jericho think? Quote, in order to sink the alien fleet and cause so much damage to our main force, this marshal has finally come to an end. Wait. He concentrated our main fleet here and sent us to attack the Emperor's star Palalas. After occupying Palalas, he took control of our main fleet. At that time, wasn't he the president? I'm afraid President Desler was killed by him. This could be a coup. Before his comrade could reply, a burst energy beam shattered the fighter jet into pieces. The death of his comrade made the frightened Volk accelerate the speed of pulling the control stick and crazily change the flight trajectory of the fighter jet, but as the distance grew closer, the fighter jets of the entire formation were still rapidly losing. This hellish scene couldn't help but make Volk think of running away as his family still had parents and children waiting for him to support them. At this moment, scenes of his comrades being killed by dense explosive beams emerged in his mind, recalling those comrades who had been taken away. He rubbed his red eyes and shouted loudly, Sorry, family. Quote dot, I'm leaving you all. God bless Gamalus. Subsequently, he forcefully pulled the control lever and caused the entire bomber to crash into the Supreme. However, a emerald green explosive beam caused Volk's combat attack aircraft to crash in front of the shield and turn into a fireworks display. 
At this moment, on the red painted Zeragut class battleship. Ha 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 ha. Jellic laughed heartily, and his current mood seemed to be very good. This is precisely because the screen in front of him showed the figure of the dead President Desler. I was deeply moved by your speech just now, Jellicle. President Desler chuckled as he looked at the marshal who had conspired to usurp the throne. How could that be? The ship you're on should already be. You are really a man with a bad brain. That is to say, the one who died was a stunt double. I have already mastered the assassination plan. Thanks to you for letting me pass the time well. So your charges have been confirmed. Do you have any last words? Gee. Quote. Bang bang bang. Before Desla could finish speaking, Jalik fired three shots and directly smashed that screen. It's not like this. Absolutely not like this. Then, in a state of extreme panic, Jellic threw away his gun and rushed towards the microphone, shouting loudly at the remaining Camilla warships. Soldiers with aspirations, I am willing to bear the name of treason to show that it is my sincere heart. Quote. Before Jericho could finish speaking, Gale, who picked up his gun, shot through his heart with a single shot. Stupid Gale. Jellic, who was shot, collapsed immediately after saying his last words and died on the spot. At this moment, Gale, who had just killed Jericho and was sweating profusely, spoke out. Damn traitor. At this moment, a gamer's operator rushed towards Gale in a panic and shouted, Major General Gale, there is an emergency situation. Quote, the energy core of Balloon Star has been attacked by enemy fleets and cannot be controlled. It is about to explode. After hearing these words, Gale showed an extremely frightened expression on his face and said, how could it be? Quote dot, retreat. Retreat. Evacuate this area immediately. Shortly after Gale issued the retreat order, a violent explosion occurred in the energy core of the planet Balloon. The energy generated by the explosion quickly spread to all sides, and some of the galactic fleet was instantly engulfed by a huge shockwave. A chain reaction occurred, and it became part of this super fireworks. However, Due to the destruction of many of the Gamalus parade fleet by the Supreme, which resulted in the fleet being more dispersed and Gale issuing a timely retreat order. The explosion of the energy core of the planet Balloon did not completely destroy the parade fleet. However, it is no longer important how many ships are left in the parade fleet now. At the same time, inside the bridge of the Supreme, Lin Kai looked through the transparent steel at the large number of battleships in front of the Camilla fleet, which turned into fireworks. He smiled and said, spread out the defense circle and let all the firepower pour towards the Camilla fleet. Quote, after receiving orders from Lin Kai, the defense circle gradually dispersed, and each ship was facing the Garmira's fleet at its best angle. With another wave of emerald green death net being raised, the remaining Garmira's ships were powerless like prey in the net, and were blown up one after another. Immediately afterwards, a thick explosive beam exploded next to the red-painted Zeragut class commanded by Gale. The shock wave generated by the explosion directly caused this Zeragut class to break in half. Subsequently, more explosive beams hit the Zeragut-class battleship, and the violent explosion directly engulfed the 700-meter-long battleship. As the fireball dispersed, only small fragments remained. When the 700-meter-long fireworks exploded, Gale, who was able to command the parade fleet, also went to heaven or hell. But Lin Kai believed that the possibility of going to hell was even greater. Chapter 9. The Response of the Senior Management of Gamalus. You are listening at novelfull.audio. In the endless starry sky, 
Gamalus's dimensional submarine slowly left the subspace. Standing on the submarine, Desla, dressed in an armored spacesuit, muttered to herself with heavy emotions, what can we get by guarding this planet? Quote, At this moment, the voice of the operator could be heard inside the armored spacesuit that Desla was wearing. About to enter the atmosphere. Please return to the ship's interior. Quote, In a dimly lit room, Demol sat helplessly on a chair, the door opened, and the bright light dispersed the darkness. He suddenly opened his eyes. Demol was taken to the presidential palace at a loss. Demol entered the presidential palace and saw Desla, and he stood in a standard posture facing President Desla. Heath, in front of Demol, reported to Desla Hui with a hint of pride. The identities of all the rebels who responded to Jericho have been discovered and will soon be completely eradicated. Desla, leaning on the chair, opened her eyes thoughtfully and said to Demol, you have suffered an unpleasant experience. Quote. Demma said with a hint of sadness in his tone, no. Seeing that the atmosphere was not right, Heath quickly reconciled and said, but in this way, the president's rule becomes even more solid. Quote. After hearing Heath's words, Demol said with heavy sadness, will it be at the cost of the complete annihilation of the main fleet? Ah, this, this, quote, Demol continued with sadness as he looked at Heath's surprised expression, saying that the Black Triangle and its escort fleet could sink all over 10,000 of our warships without any loss. Can we still use more warships to encircle the Black Triangle and its escort fleet now? In the endless starry sky, a huge triangular warship stands out, with 32 engines at the tail emitting dazzling crimson light, propelling the dreadnought to navigate through the area. Inside the bridge of this triangular warship, Lin Kaijung, give an impassioned speech on fleet radio. The gap between failure and victory is huge enough to accommodate an empire that once ruled the Milky Way. The corrupt New Republic has seized the vast territory of the empire, compressing the living space of every imperial citizen. Those insects have driven the great imperial elites into the unknown space, but they did not expect the empire to rise again, completely overturning the old order. Remember, the empire is the supreme first order of the Milky Way at any time. The corrupt new republic has no right to rule this glorious galaxy. Now, Please remember the pain you endured in the past, and in the future, repay this pain a hundred times to the New Republic. Quote, After expressing his hatred towards the New Republic and vowing revenge, Lin Kai ended his speech and turned to the nearby operator, giving instructions. Prepare for a hyperspace jump, target, the planet Leptopoda. The orders of the new supreme leader were quickly executed, and as the view inside the bridge turned into a blurred blue shaded corridor, the entire fleet reached a speed that was unimaginable in real space and sailed towards Leptoperda. Not long after, 21 huge warships appeared in the Leptoperda orbit and began to concentrate ground troops. At this moment, the commander of the 17th concentration camp, Bozen, watched as 30 huge at walkers marched with heavy steps and the first fleet continued to drop ground troops. He was so scared that he almost fainted. Finally, Bozen gritted his teeth and ordered to send tank troops to besiege those quadruped machines. With this group of tanks moving at high speed towards those at walkers. Equipped on the at walking machine, Two explosive guns began to aim at the high-speed tanks, and then a red explosive beam spewed out from the muzzle. The tank exploded into a small firecracker upon contact with the explosive beam. Then, under the one-by-one -one naming of the it at Pedestrian Street explosive cannon, they were all blasted to pieces. As the commander of the concentration camp, 
Bozen was so frightened that he fell to the ground. Due to the fact that Leptopoda is a concentration camp planet, there are no defense weapons such as large turrets on the entire planet. Therefore, apart from the warships in the port, the Gamalus side has no weapons that can harm it at. And the warships in the port are not as damn as those big and ridiculous warships. As a large number of stormtroopers disembarked from transport ships and joined the battle. A large number of Gamera's puppet robots sent by Bozen were split in half under the fierce firepower of the stormtroopers. After eliminating all the defensive forces outside the 17th concentration camp, the stormtroopers attempted to enter the interior of the camp. Now, almost every direction has stormtroopers carrying out explosions. Subsequent members of the stormtroopers quickly attacked from all directions after the gate and exterior walls of the 17th concentration camp were blown open. The white soldiers are firing wildly inside the 17th concentration camp, destroying everything that poses a threat to them and sending it all to Keegon. The Gamera's puppet robot is completely unable to resist this fierce attack, but it continues to resist under the program settings. But under the immense firepower of the explosive gun, the puppet robots were ultimately annihilated. Kill all those who resist except for the commander of the 17th concentration camp. Quote, search one room at a time. If you can't enter, use it directly to take a shot. Quote, at this moment, Bozen, who was in his office, heard footsteps getting closer and closer, and was frightened to hide under his desk. A footsteps outside the door stopped as they passed by Bozen's office followed by a beep from Bu. The office gate exploded on the spot. After a long time, when Bozen woke up again, Charles, who had suffered from nuclear cancer, showed an evil smile and said, take off his upper body clothes. Quote, two of Charles's subordinates immediately took off Bozen's shirt upon receiving Charles's order. Looking at Bozon, who was very frightened and bare-skinned, Charles nodded in satisfaction, then picked up the whip from the table and began to beat him. After beating Boson with terrifying wounds one by one, Charles's whip landed on Boson's wound with every stroke, making Boson happy and let out bursts of ghostly cries and wolf howls. After a while, Charles asked, where are Gal Dietz and Demel's wives? Quote dot. I don't. Ah. As soon as Bosson spoke, Charles stabbed him in the thigh with a dagger and then, more unfamiliarly, turned the dagger. As time passed, Charles grew tired of the various tools of torture stored in the interrogation room, so he began to search for better playable treasures everywhere. In the end, he found the bright red iron plate that had already been burned in the charcoal stove. Faced with this kind of big baby who was very backbone, Bozen directly called out. But just as Charles was using the operator to ask Bozen, news suddenly came out of the door that Demel's wife had been found. Then Charles turned Bozen, who had wasted a long time, into a roasted man. Later, according to the stormtroopers passing by the entrance, they thought Charles and his team were grilling meat in the interrogation room of Camilla. Subsequently, Gal Dietz and Eliza were escorted to the Supreme, and the First Fleet completely melted the entire crust of Liptopoda, using this method to avoid escaping fish. At this moment, the high-ranking officials of Gamalus were sitting in front of a round table. Desla changed his usual mischievous way of holding his cheeks with both hands and silently looked at the people sitting at the table, as if waiting for his subordinates to speak. A little figure, named Demol in Gamalus said first. Currently, the Black Triangle has invaded the National Defense Line and is approaching the Gate of Salza. How should we respond when all domestic defense vessels are annihilated? At this moment, as the captain of the SS, 
Kimley spoke with a relaxed expression, Don't worry. I still have a secret fleet in my hands. Let the SS replace the army in national defense. Quote. After Kimley finished speaking, he looked at the other executives with a shitty expression and smiled, saying, What, are you all surprised? Quote. At this moment, the high-ranking officials around the round table turned their astonished eyes to Kimmel, as if saying, What kind of fleet does our Gamala's side have that can sink the Black Triangle? This situation lasted for a period of time until Desla stood up silently and left, which was considered the end. Chapter 10. Thunder and Kennedy are saved. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Meanwhile, Yulia Iskander on board the Yamato woke up from the automatic cruise control room. This fleet is really interesting. If there is a chance in the future, I will definitely visit the internal facilities of the Supreme Supreme. Quote, the crew of the Yamato were very excited when they learned that Ulsa had awakened. They all went to greet the Princess of Iskander, after all, a beautiful alien girl. Who wouldn't want to go and see her? After learning the news of Julia's awakening, Lin Kai thought that she might be the first to look for her sister. In order to make Yulia owe her a favor, Lin Kai dispatched Hux to assist Yulia in dealing with these seemingly insignificant matters. At this moment, facing the enthusiastic crew of the Yamato, Yulia, who was determined to find her sister, did not communicate much with the Yamato crew. She just smiled and greeted them before following Hux to find her sister Sasha. Along the way, Yulia also asked Hux many questions about her sister. Hux hastily replied a few words and casually dealt with it. Quickly, Hercules took Julia to the room prepared by Wen Penghui for Shaxia. After scanning to confirm that he had permission to enter the room, Hercules asked Shaxia for her opinion and permission, and the sliding door slowly opened. At this moment, Shasha, who had already run to the sliding door, happily walked up to Yulia and hugged her, saying, Sister, have you been doing well lately? Quote dot. Have you been injured? I'm fine, sister. I really want to thank the First Order for saving me when I was about to die. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to see your sister now. Quote. At this time, Hexas, who did not want to see the reunion of sisters again, was just about to leave when Yulia suddenly grabbed his hand. Hexas turned his head and asked, Miss Yulisha, what else can I do for you? It's nothing, General Hux. I just want to know where the person who saved my sister is now. I want to thank him in person. Go to the bridge to find him. He is usually by the side of the Supreme Leader. After finishing speaking, Hux turned around and left without looking back. Inside the bridge of the Supreme, Lin Kai was looking at the two force cultivation rules in the Traveler Mall with a constipated expression. Guangming Force Practice Rules. 10 billion system credit points. Introduction. This cultivation manual records a large number of powerful and weak force skills related to the bright side. Note 2. It is not guaranteed whether you can learn it or not. Dark Force Practice Rules. 10 billion system credit points. Introduction. Same as the above note. Note. Tranquility is a lie. Only anger can exist. Anger gives birth to strength. Strength gives birth to power. Strong power gives birth to victory. Breaking the shackles of victory. The force breaks the shackles, and my heart has no peace, only irritability can exist. My heart has no fear, only strong power can exist. My heart has no death, only eternal survival. My heart has no weakness, only darkness can exist. I am the source of darkness, I am fearless, and I instill fear in enemies. I can annihilate all things and I deeply understand the path of darkness. 
I am the fire of hatred, and billions of planets submit to me. I swear to death, loyalty to darkness, and I am in death. Shining in the middle, I deeply understand the path of darkness, I am a Sith. Not long ago, Lin Kai unlocked the Traveler Mall. In this mall, there are some items of other space travelers hanging, such as the two force cultivation rules above. I'd better go somewhere else first. I can't afford to spend this damn thing. Quote. A few minutes later, Lin Kai found two items on the prop page that caught his eye. Advanced warship repair kit. 50 million system credit points. Introduction. Touch this repair kit and then select the warship you want to repair. When the warship is severely damaged, this repair kit can be used to repair it. It can instantly restore severely damaged warships that cannot continue to fight to a normal combat state. If a large number of personnel die, some personnel will be added to control the warship. Closing square bracket. Note. Selling this thing for 50 million system credit points is a very cheap price. This is the first time Lin Kai has seen something like a warship repair kit. And the price can be said to be very affordable. The thunder is his mother saved. By the way, the system, how many credit points does it take to revive a person? Not much. Only about 1 million. Quote. After receiving a response from the system, Lin Kai decisively bought this product. Whether to use Advanced Battleship Repair Kit. Please select the warship to be repaired. The repair of the Thunder, S commissioned Level 4 Siege Dreadnought has been completed. And it has been detected that the ship is not in this universe. Do you choose to use 100,000 credit points to immediately teleport it to this universe? Closing square bracket. The Thunder has completed its transmission. Do you choose to resurrect Morton Kennedy? Morton Kennedy has been resurrected. 